a thousand stories of what they think you're like a viper, a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Let's sing together, Let's sing it with me. I've seen many searching for answers. Let me hear you. Everybody sing it out, but I know oh, yeah. we're all searching for answers. Only you provide us, you know, just what we need before we say, Oh, Lord, you're good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are, yes. It's who you are. Well, good morning and welcome to the Cleveland Church. I'm Ryan Painters, my, or my friend Chris Donaldson and Kirby Freeman, and uh, we want to welcome you here today. Um, as you can probably tell, we're doing something a little bit different here. We're in the downtown city that we love, Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, we're actually going to take a small break from the Beneath the Surface series and really just address some of the things that are going on in our city and really all over the world uh, today. Uh, you know, I think the the events and all the all the tension and the the, the racial discord. I mean, literally, our children and grandchildren are going to be reading about this week in their history books in the years to come. And so we thought, you know what? 
We want to be a light to the world. We had just learned about that. Let's talk about really some of the things that are going on. And so we're going to do things a little bit different. There's a lot of confusion out there right now. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of grieving, a lot of mourning. And what we want to do is really just bring to you uh, this morning a message of hope that comes from Jesus. Amen. One thing I just want to just to, um, emphasize to everyone is that our church is a very beautiful church. Um, and um, the strength of our church is really the diversity. Mm -hmm. And it's not just ethnicity, it's, it's you know, a wide range of different areas, you know, income levels, as well as just experiences. And so, um, you know, in order to uh, build unity, I think what we need to be doing is looking to God, um, because it is God uh, that actually brings peace. It is ultimately God that brings uh, justice, and is ultimately God that, uh, that brings unity. And uh, so let's look to God in everything we say and do, uh, even as we're watching what's going on, uh, not just in the throughout the country but worldwide. Uh, let's keep uh, let's let's keep a God uh, centered perspective on everything that is happening around us. Amen. Amen. We're going to talk a lot about Jesus today, and and here's something that was written about Jesus in Matthew chapter 12. It says, "This was to fulfill what was spoken to the prophet Isaiah." Here is my servant whom I have chosen, the one I love and whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out till he has brought justice through to victory. In his name, the nations will put their hope. Jesus was a man that was known for his justice and he was a man that brought hope. And that's a little bit of what we hope to do here this morning. We're all gonna take an opportunity just to preach the word here a little bit. And so uh, uh, we hope you, we can just stand together as a church during this time. We're gonna continue with a word of prayer by our brother, Chris Donaldson. Amen. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, God, we are grateful. Uh, God, that you give us one another. God, that you give us uh, people from, from all races, ethnicities, uh, races, ethnicities, income levels. God, I pray for our, our, our church, God, as we, as we just go through a, a, a time of, of upheaval in the world, God, that we can remain unified, God, so we can listen to one another, God, that we can learn to love one another. Yep. God, I pray for our world, uh, God, I pray that, God, there would be a great healing, God, God, that the world can see you clearer now, God, they can see their, their need for you. God, I pray that we can be that light to the world. We love you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 My name is, is Chris Donaldson. For, for those who don't know me, the, for those that are, are, are listening for the first time, um, I have lived in, in Cleveland, been part of the Cleveland Church for about a year and a half now. Um, and it's just a great honor to, to, to be here, just to even virtually to, to share a little bit of, of, of my thoughts. Um, you know, for the past two weeks, I think for even for me, uh, uh, the past two weeks have been sort of an awakening for myself. Just a, to a, awakening to my own, my own feelings, my own experiences with racial injustice. Um, start, I'm, I, I feel as though I'm starting to, to, to wake up and to, to really feel it and, and wanting to do something about it in a great way. And, and I hope what I what I share this uh, this morning can can be helpful for those that that that, that want to make a difference in their own lives, that that want to want to see differently. I hope it, it makes a difference for for those that are are are, are begging for change, that want to see change both in both in the world and in our church. Um, and, and I hope it, it, it helps spark some dialogue. Because I, I do think that is what's gonna be powerful. That, that, that's what we need in this moment, is to listen to one another. In John, in John 1, in verse 19, it says, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. You know, James gives them a, a, a charge here to, to be slow to speak, to be slow to speak and to be quick to listen. And I, I think if we're going to confront the sins that are racism and racial injustice and any type of injustice, both in the world and out, both in the world and in the church, if we're going to confront these sins and they are sins, that we have to be quick to listen and slow to speak. You know, James tells them they, that they got to, they've got to be quick to listen. You know, and what James is, is referring to here is he's, he's referring to a, to a humble listening. 
you know we can we can listen like I'm like I'm listening to the the, the, the wind and the traffic going be, going on behind me but I'm not really paying attention to it you know we can give a, a cursory listen like oh yeah I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna listen um, and, 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 and check that box off now what James is referring to and what's needed in this hour is radical radical listening radical humility because the worst thing that can happen in this moment, the worst thing that can happen is not the rioting and smashed windows. Windows can be replaced, items can be replaced. Rioting is not the worst thing that can happen. The worst thing that can happen is that we're not changed in any meaningful way. The worst thing that can happen is, is that we don't listen to each other, that we don't listen to what causes protests, to what causes these things. That's the worst thing that could happen. The worst thing that happened is that we're not changed, that we don't develop Jesus' heart for the war, that we don't develop Jesus' heart for injustice. That's the worst thing that can happen. The worst thing that happened is that we let this moment pass us and we change nothing. And we do the same things that we did before. And what does that mean, listen? It means we've, we've got to listen intently. We've got to listen humbly. You know, we've got to listen to each other in true humility. It means our, our, it means our white members, we have, to, we have to listen to the black ones. It means black members, we have to listen to, to, to white members. We have to listen to each other intently and to hear our, each other's experiences. It's going to take radical hum, humility and radical listening from ethnic mi majorities within our congregation. It's going to take listening to, to folks like myself and, and, and to folks like Kirby. It's going to take listening to, to, to our experiences by, by majorities within our congregation to truly conf to, to, to empathize with our experiences. It's going to take that radical of humility. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll never be able to confront the sins of, of, of racism and injustice if we can't listen in extreme humility. If we can't listen in, in radical humility, if we're not willing to listen, to repent, and to forgive one another, and all that starts with listening. If we're not willing to listen, we can't ever confront those things. You know, we'll also have to, to listen and be willing to be wrong. We'll have to listen and, to, and willing to be wrong. You know, too often our, our conversations about racism and, and racial injustice have been, you know, have been relegated to, to a topic of politics. These things are, are political, and, and because I'm a Christian, this is church, we don't talk about politics here. And the only thing that, that and, and, and what's that serve to do is it serve to relegate the, 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 the lived experiences of our brothers and sisters to the sideline. Because these injustices are, are politics, we don't have to, we're, we're not gonna talk about that. And it served to, 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 to relegate these lived experiences to the sideline. We haven't heard and listened. You know, we have to be able to, 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 to listen and to be wrong about our previous assumptions. We have to be able to, to, to listen and be wrong about what we thought the world was, what we, who we thought we were, who we thought the, the church was. We have to be willing to be wrong about things. We have to be willing to be wrong because the most un one of the most unloving things that we can do as as people as christians is not listen to one another one of the most unloving things we can do is not listen to one another to relegate our our, our experiences to some taboo topic that we don't talk about here because we have quote unquote more spiritual things to get to you know we've got to to listen and be able to be wrong if we're not willing to be wrong, then we're not willing to be humble, then we're not willing to be like Jesus. If we're not willing to be wrong or and humble, we're not willing to be like Jesus. You know, you know, James tells them to be quick to listen and slow to speak, but he never says don't speak. He tells them to be slow to speak. You know, and I think an important step in confronting racism and, and, and injustice both in our church and outside of it is be willing to speak up when we see it happen. Is be willing to speak when we see it happen. When we see racism and injustice within the church, we have to speak. When we see it outside the church, we have to speak. 
Why do we have to speak? Because we have the answer. Every time we as Christians have the answer. Every time that we open the Bible and sit down to read God's word, we read the answer to the world's issue. We read the answers to racism and injustice. The world thinks that they have the answer. They are incorrect. You have the answer. You as a disciple have the answer in your Bible or on your phone. We have the answer. And if we don't speak, those of us that have the answer, if we can't confront the sins of racism and injustice, if we can't confront it, if we can't speak about it, who can? Then the world is, is, is well, they're up a creek. We have the answer. We can't delegate this conversation to the rest of the world. The Bible is not silent about sin, about the sin of racism and injustice. God is not silent about these things. And so if we're silent about these things, what does it say about us? What does it say about, the, about what God says about racism and injustice? You know, we've got to be able to listen to one another with great humility and be able to, 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 to be wrong, to, 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 to apologize and, and, and ask for forgiveness, to offer forgiveness and to, to be repentant. We have to listen to one another. We have to speak our stories. We have to tell them. We have to listen. You know, and, then we have, and in this moment, we can be more like Jesus when we speak out against racism and injustice. No longer can it be relegated to, to, to a, a, a thing that we don't talk about. It. It's, it's, it's taboo or it's, or it's, 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 it's um, you know, it's, 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 it's politics. No, this, this, has had to, this has to be a conversation that we, the church, have. Why? Because we have the answer. We have the answer. And we've got to talk about it. We've got to be real. We've got to be willing to be wrong. And we can change the world. We can change our hearts. If we can change our hearts, we can change the world. We can be more like Jesus who cared for the oppressed, who cared for the downcast, who listened and felt with them. In this way, when we listen and speak, we are more like Jesus. Amen. Hello, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kirby Freeman. I've been with the church um, here in Cleveland for 22 years since my family moved here from New York City. I'm um, originally from here, um, this area, and um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's great to, you know, basic, basically be talking to you tonight, uh, today. Um, I had a scripture, the first thing I wanted to talk about was just everything that's going on. Um, but first of all, let's just start off with a scripture, and um, what I was going to just talk about is in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And with everything that's going on, first of all, you never know who's watching. For anyone that is close to the Floyd family or family of friends to, the, uh, to George Floyd, First of all, I just want to just uh, extend my condolences. I, can, I cannot imagine what you're going through right now. Um, but being the father of, of, of an African-American father of African-American children um, in this society right now, I can, somehow, I can somewhat relate. My wife and I, uh, we have three children. Uh, one is almost 27, another one is 22, my son, my older son, and my youngest son just graduated from Shaker, um, you know, uh, last week. He's 18. And my wife will tell you, for those of you who know us, will tell you she's constantly on her knees whenever any of her kids go out of the house, whenever they're out and about, especially my sons, because, because of what happens in society uh, with our children. Our children are not seen the same way. Even though we're in the church and we are disciples, we still don't have the same, we don't have the same experiences um, as people in this society. There is still racism in America. 
there is um, there you know our children and ourselves we will be treated differently in this society the real issue is what do we do about that and the thing to do about that is to keep a God-centered mindset about everything that is going on for those of us who who would like to protest I would say that Jesus was about protest. Jesus was about speaking truth to power. And the protests that are going on, the peaceful protests especially, is about speaking truth to power. That's not, un that's not unlike what we do as disciples. Right now, this world is, 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 is basically, um, you know, Satan has a lot to do with what goes on in this world. A lot of the pain, a lot of um, the issues in this world is, is a result of sin. And Satan has, a, has, you know, basically has a ringside seat to see everything that goes on. But when we're disciples, as disciples, we're speaking truth to power. We're going in front of a world that is all about sin and being and trying to follow Jesus' example. Jesus went to the cross because he was, a, he, he, he was about protest. He was about the sin that was going on around, uh, the sin that was going on around him. And he was about trying to uh, uh, bring change, okay? And so you can, still be, uh, you can still be socially conscious and still go out and, 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 and be a disciple at the same time, as long as you're not hurting anyone or anything of that sort. But I would also say, for those of us who experience racism, experience inequities, um, look to God, do the things that are necessary to improve yourself. But at the same time, I would say, um, God is in control ultimately. And for those of us who don't know that experience, Get to know the experience we we have a wide and diverse church we all need to be talking to each other right now and with that said you got to know the other person's point of view and I would just say that as an African-American man at this particular point in, in history we are watching history we are watching changes happen all around us and it's incumbent on us Well, thanks for uh, Chris and Kirby for, for sharing before me here. And I have a few words as well. And you know, as a minister, I'm just always trying to figure out how do I best minister to the people. And right now, our church, we've got a lot of people feeling a lot of things. Uh, how do I minister to the people that are, that are really hurting right now? How, what about those that are angry right now? What about those that are just confused? Or, or even those that are, you know, maybe just starting to come to an understanding of just how big of a problem we really have here in this country. And as I was thinking about all this, this scripture came to mind. And it's about Jesus and it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. I was thinking about Jesus and one of the, the, the awesome aspects about Jesus is in fact his ability to relate to us no matter where we are. And I think, you know, as I think about Jesus, there were times where he was the ethnical majority. There were other times where he was the, the clear minority. Um, just going through it, you know, Jesus was from a low-level slum of Israel called Nazareth. Even at some point, somebody said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? You know, he was the minority in that setting. Turn around, he was the Jewish leader living in Israel. Well, he was the ethnic majority during that time. Jesus lived during a time of Roman oppression. He was the minority. Jesus' predominant ministry location was Galilee, where he was the ethnical majority. Jesus ministered in places like Samaria and the Decapolis, where he was the minority. But Jesus also had a woman tell him that even the dogs eat from the table that drops from you. In that instance, he was the ethnical majority. Jesus ends his life in Jerusalem and that was a place of clear prejudice towards the Galileans. He was absolutely 
a minority in that setting. And so what? no matter what the circumstance, what's awesome about Jesus and what's awesome about the scriptures is we can learn from his example because he's walked before us and felt the things that we have felt. You know, for those, just to, just to take a second, for those of you in the ethnical majority, Jesus has a message for you. And let's just be real. That's me. I'm the ethnical majority. I, uh, if you haven't told, if you couldn't tell, I am, I'm a white man. I uh, grew up in Hudson, Ohio. I was at a graduating class of 180 people, and literally there was one African American in my graduating class. That's who I am. And yet Jesus can relate to me in certain circumstances. I look at Jesus as a man who was the ethnical majority in Israel, and yet what did he do? He was a man that reached out to those that were oppressed. He was a man that listened. He was a man that brought healing. You know, we, you think about that woman at the well. I mean, that's a double whammy. Jesus is meeting with a Samaritan woman, okay? A Samaritan woman. A minority on top of minority. And, and in that setting, what does Jesus do? He shows empathy, compassion, love. He offers her the kingdom. There's a message there. You know, earlier in our sermon series, we were talking through Matthew 4. I just want to read this again. L listen to the crowd that they came to Jesus. Uh, in Matthew chapter 4, it reads, News about him spread over all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures and the paralyzed, and he healed them. These people, in, all, in, their, in their own way, were a minority that was not wanted in their society, and Jesus said, come on into my kingdom. I'm going to love up on you. Large crowds from Galilee, that's Jewish. The Decapolis, that's not Jewish. Jerusalem, that's a different form of Judaism. Judea, the region across the Jordan, they all followed him. Jesus brought people together. And it, people just flocked to this man. And I think for those of us that are in the ethnical majority, this is a time for us to listen and to listen and to listen. This is a time for us to feel and to empathize. And this is a time really just to educate ourselves on really what's going on in the things that we don't see or haven't seen in the past. I've watched so many documentaries this week and it's been so helpful. This last one, it shook me to my core. It's called The 13th. It's on Netflix. Oh, so phenomenal. I've had wonderful conversations with so many different members. Shed Taylor, shout out to you, man. I've really enjoyed our talks together. And I actually was able to, I was telling the brothers a little bit about this, but I was able to attend something uh, on Friday night from the Denver church. And it was, a, it was called Untold Stories. And it's something that I actually want to bring to the Cleveland church and something I want to do in the next week or two. But these untold stories, it, it, it comes from a quote from Maya Angelou. And it says, she says, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. And I'm real excited. We're going to host an untold story night and, and, and have a few different brothers and sisters share just about their experiences in just an environment where they can just share what life has been like and what racial tensions that they themselves have experienced. And if for no other reason, I mean, it brings healing, it brings uh, comfort, mourning, but it also brings a lot of unity and, and, and information and we're gonna to get to be able to know our brothers and sisters on a deeper level. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna come with that and it's gonna be really, really awesome. Guys, for those of you in the ethnical majority, it's time to listen, it's time to love, it's time to show empathy and to try to bring unity. But Jesus wasn't always just the ethnical majority. He was also the minority. And what can we learn from, from, from him in those situations? Well, when, again, when he goes to Jerusalem, you wanna talk about a man that was oppressed Let's talk about his week in Jerusalem, because that's all he lasts is one week before he's killed. And Jesus was a man, and as I'm trying to bring this message here, I want us to understand that what can we learn from him? Jesus was a man that was pro-protest. Okay, I realize that might be controversial, but it's not. He was pro-protest. This guy was controversial from day one of his birth. People are trying to kill him. You know, Jesus, the preteen, is ditching his parents and staying at the temple. He's like, this is the place that I need to be. He was a controversial man. He goes back to his hometown of Nazareth, preaches a message to his own people. You know what their response was? They tried to throw him off a cliff. Uh, Jesus was, was known for publicly denouncing the corruption of the Pharisees. He says things like he publicly teaches against the yeast of the Sadducees. 
And he even speaks out against the Roman authority above him, Herod, calling him a fox. This was a man that was not afraid to express what he felt and express truth. Church, it's okay to protest. And some of you want to and some of you don't, and that's fine. You do what you do you, that's fine. I think Jesus would support those sort of things. At the same time, I would take us back to the cross and with Jesus, and I think it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway, Jesus was anti-violence. Peter wants to get physical when Jesus gets arrested. And he pulls out his sword and he's going for this guy. He cuts off the guy's ear, which if he's, you don't cut off an ear with a sword on purpose. I mean, I think he was going for the neck and Jesus stops him and he says, you know what? Stop it, Peter. That is not my teaching. That is not my way. Those who draw the sword will die by the sword. And I think it goes without saying, but I would just say in our protests and in the, way, in the ways that we act, let's be a light to the world. Let's be like Jesus. Let's not revolt to the ways of the world. Let's, let's let our voice be heard, but let's stay righteous. Amen. Church, as we close out here, we, again, we have a very diverse church, and that is, oh, that might be our greatest strength we bring to the city of Cleveland is just our diversity. And guys, we want to stay unified through this time multi-races, multi-class, multi-age, no matter who you are, no matter what experiences Jesus can relate. I think we need to look to each other for support during this time. I think we need to look to Jesus for answers about what to do with the feelings that we have. And lastly, I think we need to look to the cross for the example Jesus set before us. Thanks so much, church. We love you, and uh, we hope you have some great time in your discussion groups. Thanks again for joining us at the Cleveland Church.